Oh, good evening. Welcome again, everyone, to another round of the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. And uh, and I just can't wait for this every Tuesday and Wednesday night. The quality of the badminton has been superb. Uh, but the, the man best to ask is someone who's uh, delivered some of that, as well as joining us in commentary, Oliver Layden davis uh, Ollie, uh, again, you're not playing tonight, so you join us, so we're happy with that. Uh, but, man, the Dragons against the Brokers tonight, uh, the Tigers, the Tiger Brokers Tigers, the, the Dragons are under huge pressure, aren't they, to get on the board? Yeah, just think just from a confidence perspective as well. Like they fought hard and played really well uh, these first two matches, but against us last week too, they had some real chances to actually come away with a win, but haven't quite had that. So some invisible sort of growth there that they'd like to see some rewards for, um, especially tonight. This this is so close though, isn't it? I mean, we've talked about uh, wins losses on the points table, but in truth, every tie could have gone either way. So the teams have been superbly selected. Yeah, I think every tie has been at three uh, two, and come down to the final match. So there's. Yeah, complete balance across all teams, and I think it's going to be the same uh, throughout the rest of the competition. So a lot of exciting matches are still to come. OK, um, the, the coaches didn't give me much when I spoke to them a little earlier, but we can highlight the matches. I think the singles are outstanding tonight. Yeah, again, I think just really even battles um, between both matches. The girls are uh, un unbeaten so far, and then men's singles between Oscar and Edward, who have had a rivalry coming up through the juniors as well. So they'll both be out to prove something there, I think. Can you pick a winner though? I've asked you, I, how's your record? Are you 100% so far, yeah. but can you pick a winner tonight? I think I'm 100% the wrong way, mate, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I think the Dragons are going to have to pull something out, I think. So that um, desire from to get off the market uh, points-wise, I think I have to tip, tip them again. Fantastic. Uh, we're just moments away, so stay with us on the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. Uh, the first match, mixed doubles. The players are due to come on court any moment. First game tonight in this tie that means so much to both teams, but especially, as we've just described, to the Huawei Dragons, who are yet to get a win. There's a confirmation of that league table with the Dragons, just with the one point for a golden game loss. Uh, the One Pure Wolves are sitting on three points. The Tigers on the four, alongside the uh, Heitua Hawks also with four points. Remember that they play round robin twice, and then we have the top two teams play off in the final to decide the inaugural Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League champions. Here are the uh, the team lineups and uh, Oliver Layden Davis. Uh, we've we've highlighted perhaps the singles as being a real feature of this. What do you like about the Huawei Dragons? Yeah, again, I think just the spread of talent uh, across the whole team. Oscar obviously leading the way in, in the men's singles, but uh, we'll see Adam Jeffrey chance to step up tonight for him as well, getting an appearance in the mix, which we haven't seen so far. So looking forward to that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. That that is a change to the combination a little bit later in that final match of the night. Uh, the Tiger Brokers Tigers, uh, Henry Tam. Uh, again, it's so hard to separate these teams, but again, a wonderful mix of youth and experience here. Yeah, exactly. Even a combination of both in some cases. Look for Sally Fu, I think, to hold the, the, uh, the flag of you know, leading that team, especially in the singles with her experience there for New Zealand over the last couple of years. Let's have a look at how they will uh, match up tonight. The order of play, which uh, can be critical. Remember, every tie has gone to the uh, sixth and final match in some way, shape or form so far. We start with the mixed doubles. Then we have the singles matchups. And uh, Oscar and Edward, one win apiece so far uh, and one loss so far in the competition. The unbeaten singles players, though, that's going to be a feature. Shauna Lee and Sally Fu. But the match you highlighted, the final mixed doubles, Adam Jeffrey and Ashley Tan. That's a change, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Obviously, Oscar's been playing that mixed uh, so far, but they haven't had much success with it. I think they had two losses, so maybe it's a ch chance for Raga to yeah, give Adam a second chance there and see if he can really um, try and carry the team through in that last one. So they, they no doubt will have been working on that combination in the lead-up to this one tonight. We're uh, ready to roll in the uh, Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League as we welcome our first uh, match on court. It is mixed doubles, as you just saw, led out by... Our uh, umpire Simon Lynn, service judge is Trish Gubb. And the players are well versed now with how this uh, format plays out and what's important to them. They need a really good start, but uh, you've just got to be strong. I, I think I'll stop saying need a good start. I, you, you can't afford a bad patch at any time in these matches. I mean, it's obvious you need to start well, but the thing is you can't have a quiet patch, can you? No, exactly. When we talk about momentum being such a big thing in, in any sport, and it's especially obvious um, in a short format uh, like this one. Black or green? Black call. Black Liz. 
you'll surf. And okay, and you're happy with that side. Great. Thank you. Cool. So that looked like the uh, Dragons uh, winning the toss, and they will serve to get us underway. There'll be a moment or two further of uh, final warm ups and a chance for introducing uh, the uh, respective players in this one. And uh, closest to us on camera is uh, Alyssa Tagle at 20 years of age, a diminutive figure. Uh, and obviously she does like to patrol the net as often is the case with the other uh, ladies in the mix. Yeah, she's really good to actually play the shuttle soft and move in after it, good with the racket. So look for her to try and take control of the match by doing that uh, in his first mix doubles. Now, Dakman Vong at 20 years of age, uh, he will uh, be alongside Janice Jiang in the Tiger Brokers Tigers combination, a current New Zealand ranking of seven in mixed doubles uh, out of Auckland, Dakman Vong. So uh, there is his uh, playing partner. Janice is uh, one of the younger players. Uh, there are 16-year-olds in this competition. Janice at 17 years of age. Uh, and again, loves the front court, does the former dancer a gymnast. So very athletic. Uh, they've, they've split their games one and one. Whilst uh, Dylan Sajasa, who's just out of our shot there at 25 years of age. Dylan and uh, Alyssa are yet to win. They've lost both their matches so far, so they'll be very keen to uh, get their side off to a very quick start. And Dylan, I, I guess at 25, he's the senior player. Six in New Zealand in mixed doubles, so he's probably charged with leading this combination. Yeah, absolutely, I think, especially tactically. Um, he's been around for a little bit longer than Alyssa has. So Ready to play. To, to take control, especially in the midcourt, uh, through his choice of shot. And really look to, to attack and try and close down the front two thirds of the court together with Alyssa. All right, so are we going to see a contrast in styles? What, what's the key for the Dragons to get away to a good start? They haven't won this match so far in all of their ties. No, they're not. I think it's about using their strengths to kind of make sure that they're, yeah, winning their points early on um, as opposed to giving away free ones. Look for Dylan to come forward and try and be early in the midcourt especially so they get the shuttle coming up to them. But again, if Alyssa as well can be early on the net and put Janice under a little bit of pressure um, from the start, that'd be a good way for them to assert the dominance as a Dragons pair. Um, from the very first serve. And remember, we're also looking for the Crystal Ashley Design MVP that will be awarded at the end of tonight's tie. It is six games. If they're three all, we go to a golden game to decide it. Huawei Dragons Ladies up against Tiger Brokers Tigers. On my right, Tiger Brokers Tigers, represented by Dakman Vong, Janice Jan. <laughs> On my left, Huawei Dragons, represented by Dylan Sanjosa. Alyssa Tegel. <laughs> Huawei Dragon to serve. Alyssa Tegel to Dankman Vong. Love all. Play. <laughs> Service over. One love. It's over. One, four. Yeah. Players really do need to have their warm-up sorted, don't they? They, Two, they want to be coming out one. on court here with a with a full sweat on and ready to go. Oh. Yeah. Three. One. Yeah, I think to their credit, we've seen that pretty consistently throughout this league so far. The conditions are cool. They're cool again tonight, but that's even cooler than last week, so that slows Four. the shuttle. One. Yeah, it just means the air's a little bit heavier uh, in the hall itself, so if the shuttle's the same speed, which I assume it is, tested of course before the, the start of tonight's session but early positive signs for the Dragons um, getting out to a 4-2 lead but they've been the ones doing the attacking in all six rallies I think so far
power there this time from Vong. Gets them Three, right back into this four. first game. First to 11, remember. Must win by two. There's uh, the power. He is uh, it's over. nicely warmed up. Five. Three. Yeah, good control of the rally again from both Dragons players. taking a break, she'd just quietly sneak their rackets and start to have a hit. A uh, little bit of confusion there between Tagle and Sojasa. Five, nine. Tigers need to go on a little run here though to give themselves any chance in this first game. Definitely started to combine a little bit and now the Tigers pair. Interesting as well, drawing Sojasa forward to net, getting him out of position. Yeah. Six, nine. Exactly, it's spot on Andrew. There's often a little Ten bit of space in front of the, the male player, especially in the mix, this would prefer to be towards the back of the court. controlled and in the end put away by Vong. They're right back in this one at 7-9. Seven, nine. Seven, nine. Yeah, great control on that rally from Dakman Vong. Stretching Tagle to first the front corner and the back corner of the court. And good judgment. I said they needed to go on a run and they've done Eight, just that. Nine. total contrast to the first half of this first game. It's wide. So I make that Nine, four, four points in a row. I was going to say five, but definitely four. This is brilliant. What a comeback this is. And they now have game points. Ten. Game point. Nine.
10 all. Psychologically, this becomes huge now for both pairings. Over. The opening was there, wasn't it? 11, 10. Yeah, she certainly did the work to create the chance for herself. Out. It's over. 11, all. Chancer. They face down a game point, and now 12, they have one of their own. 11. Yeah, well, good comeback. A good comeback from both pairings. Goodness me, Vong and Jang look like they were well out of that game. They force their own game point, but Third game won by Huawei Dragons, 13-11. I said psychologically it was important, Ollie, but I think more so for the Dragons, because had they lost that game after leading by such a big margin, that could put a huge dent in the confidence. Now at least they feel, Phew, we got out of it. Yeah, 100%, especially having come off the back of not had a win yet in, in the overall competition. So, you know, to get that first game under your belt and under the... Yeah, especially after having been out to play so well and get to a 9-5 lead early on in that first game. But I think a lot of credit's got to go to Janice Jang and the way that the Tigers were able to fight back there. She stepped forward. You could hear Coach Henry Tam talking about moving forward, take the net, and she did exactly that. And just by moving herself forward positionally in the court, a lot of shuttles started coming up to the racket of Dakman Vong and makes his life a lot easier to control from the midcourt as well. So, yeah, a lot of maturity shown by the young 17-year-old in the back half of that first game. Great input from uh, Oliver Layden Davis, of course, uh, playing for the One Pure Wolves in this competition, but joining us on his uh, off nights uh, in the commentary hot seat. As uh, these two pairings now remember that uh, Sojasa and Tagle have not won yet in both their uh, matches so far. They've been beaten clearly better than that. Clearly, they are as good as most mixed combinations in the Loon Coach New Zealand League, so can they go on and get the job done here? Second game. Love all. Play. That's what Sir Vong and Jiang have got to avoid. One. Love. That power game of Sir Jasa. Oh, great reaction. Defensive play. That was world class. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Dylan himself can quite believe it. Yeah, I don't think the contact was Two. quite what he's after. Love. But it went exactly where he intended it to go. Oh. 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 I reckon it's like Three. every good game Love. of golf. You can't draw pictures on the scorecard. <laughs> If you, if you shank one and put one along the ground and you finish with a par, you just write down the score and move on. It's just long. It's over. Oh, and uh, Tagger was looking for some assistance one, from Simon three. Lynn.
pressure from Jiang, the angle, but also to have that control with the power. Yeah, good return to serve. The height on the left is what made that so good. Good to see her taking chances like that at the net, though. Oh, and that time he didn't get lucky. Caught the frame, it's but over. went wide. Four, five. Danger time here now Four. for the Tigers. Time out. And I think Tiger Henry Tam Tiger. has recognised just that. <laughs> I reckon I might have had the card out there for a timeout as well, Ollie, because <laughs> that three point break, you've already lost the first game. Something's got to change. Yeah, exactly. You need to just, again, the way they've lost those last three points are just quite quick. Um, poor flex serve, a little bit too flat, and then a couple of easy mistakes in there as well. Just to, again, stop, <laughs> take stock rethink and develop your plan and check in whether you're going to continue or you're going to make slight adaptations come into the again the crucial end of, of the second game but just to break momentum like we talked about earlier you mentioned Alyssa and her first memories of, of playing badminton it, it seems with most racket sports around the world that that often it's a family 20 connection seconds. is that the case for you ollie yep 20 exactly seconds. Mum, mum introduced me when i was eight years old so very similar introduction Has the timeout worked some magic? Seven, four. Or is the momentum just too much to Play. try and halt now? Dragons with their noses in front. Yeah, well that certainly halts it. Over. Five, seven. Play. Oh, there's a little luck. Over. Brilliant touch. Eight, six. Probably a good time now to mention that she describes her own best strength as the net tumble in the front court. It's the perfect shot, Eight. isn't it? Yes, Drop good. the shuttle on top of the net and let it fall down. Oh. Jang lost her feet there for a moment, but managed Eight. to get out of the way. Four. And the shuttle flies long. So the comeback is complete. Can they go on with it now? Just getting caught a little bit. Nine, eight. Too much in, in the flat battle, the Dragons pair. Play. I saw they were much better off earlier in the start of the first game as well, just playing softer and getting the shuttle coming up to them as opposed to engaging in the, the power. Well, I didn't listen to you, Ollie, because that was almost exactly that rally again. Ten. Game point, eight. It's wide, so we are going to a third game. Good comeback from Vong and Jiang. And, uh, Second game won by Tiger Brokers Tigers, 11-8.
Coming One back game from 7-4 down, so, so Jasa and, and Tackle could almost taste the victory. Remember, they've not had one yet. So suddenly, those uh, thoughts of uh, self-doubt creeps back in a little bit now. All that combination. I'm sure that good start in the tie. In fact, they've always been one love down in the tie. Has uh, put the team under pressure, and we've seen on the, the points table they've, they've not had a win yet. No, especially for team morale and, and confidence starting tonight as well, knowing that on the overall table you're a wee way behind means a lot to the team to get you off to a good start and start to build a bit of momentum uh, into the rest of the tie. Got to give a little bit of credit to Henry Tam there for that coach's time that I think too from 7-4 from in that second game. 7-1 turnaround after that, so whatever he said or the break in momentum certainly worked uh, for the Tigers. Final game, love all, play. Oh, clever. It's over. One, love. It's over. One, all. Oh. Oh. That's definitely one of his strengths. Jackman Vong is really good in the racket. Two, one. Especially in the midcourt region, if you give him a bit of speed to work with, he's really good to inject some power and pace back. in the corner and they do look the more assured now don't they of the two pairings Vong and Jiang you do think this Three, match now one. is within their control just wide it's a real pity without question the rally of the match so far four one yeah fantastic rally from both pairs but particularly well done from Janice Jang and the defense there she's under a lot of pressure at more than one occasion during that rally and withstood all of it earlier games but now they have to come from behind the dragons oh. and they're further behind it's over five two Oh, brilliant, Dylan Sajasa. Goodness me, that was some court coverage. Yeah, fantastic scramble mid-rally for Four, him to five. keep the Dragons alive in that rally itself. It's over. That hurts, though, after Six. such a good point to Four. give up one so cheaply. Especially when you make a good decision in your shot choice as well. There's plenty of space to play that into. 
out. It's over. Alyssa Tangles had a very good eye. She's uh, made a number of Five, very good decisions. Six. John Cord as well. Seven. Six. Jasa. Importantly, though, he set it up with a touch Over. shot first. Yeah, exactly. Created the space Seven. by bringing Dakman oh. to the front of the court as well. Moved him out of position first before coming with the power. Much more effective. Oh. Oh, Tagles just. Over. To touch momentarily at net. Eight, seven. Got to hand it to Janice Jang, though. She's certainly doing everything she can to challenge Alyssa Tegel up there. game is going to be won by very small margins. I'm not sure Sajas is overly Nine, happy with that call. Eight. But he is going to get on with it. Sigmund could get a message out there at this late stage. Nine, Let's just repeat four. that. Draw them forward. Go for the touch shot. Then use the power if you need to. Oh, they were in trouble the moment Tegel missed that shot. It's over. Ten. Match point nine. One at the Tigers. That is a brilliant display, showing really strong nerves for a young combination. And uh, Janice Jiang, coming of age in this loon coach New Zealand badminton league alongside Dakman Vong. Okay. And in the end, hard to argue, very close on the scoreboard, but they just seem to play the, uh, the big points better. Match won by Tiger Brokers Tigers. 11-13, 11-8, 11-9. Yeah, absolutely. Full credit to Dakman Vong and Janice Zhang from the Tiger Brokers Tigers in that second mixed doubles in the first match on tonight. But to be fair, it looked like one could have been one-way traffic uh, early on in the first game when Sir Jasa and Tegel got off to a big big start, and they were up 9-5, I believe. But the Tigers just stepped up, especially throughout that second. Full credit to Janice Zhang again, stepping forward, challenging Alyssa Tegel at the net, and she was able to make life a little bit easier as well for Dakman Vong in the midcourt and able to generate quite a few lifts. So they spent a lot of the time in the offense, but really calm under pressure. And there with Andrew now uh, for their match comments. Thanks, uh, Ollie. Well done, guys. Um, you showed great nerves for a, for a young combination. You must be really pleased with the way you played the big points. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, this tie means a lot to us, and we're the first game on, and we really want to set like a good good tone for the rest of the games coming up. Yeah. And Dakman, your game, you, you pleased, especially when you got involved in those power rallies. That seemed to be when you are happiest. Yeah, uh, that's my favourite kind of game, just like fast pace and mid-court. Yeah. Good stuff, so it sets the team up. It's all about the team, isn't it? So you give them some real confidence now going forward. Yeah, for sure. Like We want to put, put that point on the scoreboard for us, so uh, hopefully the rest of the team can follow.
Well done, congratulations. They did just that, winning that opening mixed doubles game. So it is the Tiger Brokers Tigers who are underway with the win. Uh, but these singles matches are going to be most intriguing. Uh, it'll be the men next up uh, as Oscar and Edward, the two young guns, go head to head. Welcome back to the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League, and it is the Tiger Brokers Tigers who are underway. A thrilling uh, three game win in the opening mixed doubles over Dylan Sajasa and Alyssa Tagle. It was Dakman Vong and Janice Jiang who got the win to get their side away to the best possible start. As we have a look at the, uh, the order of play tonight, next up it's these two. Most intriguing singles matches. Uh, Shauna Lee and Sally Fu both unbeaten in the competition. Uh, the men's singles is up next, uh, then followed by doubles for men and women. And uh, what has so far been throughout the competition the pivotal match, the deciding match, the final mixed doubles. Let's though welcome our two young stars to court here for the men's singles. They are young stars, uh, both listed at 19 years of age. But uh, Oli, I think Oscar Guo is one year older. So in terms of his age representation coming through the junior grades, they'll know a bit about each other. But uh, for the most part, they will have played in a, in a separate age for a lot of the time. Yes, it would have worked out as one year they would have played together and then one year they would have been separate on their way through. Trish Gubb your choice. in control Side. of this one. Receive, thank you. Uh, service judge Richard Bramley. We'll 
a chance to uh, talk about uh, these two players and uh, relative uh, strengths and maybe weaknesses that uh, their uh, opposition can look to exploit. But, uh, certainly with that scoreline and the, the tie of one love to the Tiger Brokers Tigers, uh, Oscar Guo is under even more pressure to deliver a win. He would come into this as uh, the favourite, but uh, Edward Lau ironically comes in with the number one New Zealand ranking. Oscar, of course, uh, is perhaps more focused on his international ranking. There is Edward at 19 years of age, that number one ranking in singles and mixed doubles. Uh, the taller of the two players, what style of game? Yeah, so they might be similar in age, these two players, but both very different styles. Edward absorbs a lot of pressure, really good on the net as well, long reach and uses that to his advantage. And great racket skills and touch and control are a real feature of his game. And his opponents, just going through his warm-up there is Oscar, Oscar Guo, also at 19 years of age. Of course, the first and obvious difference is that he is left-handed. He's uh, very much uh, more a game based on power, though. He's just so explosive, isn't he? Yeah, strong, powerful young guy. Um, uses that to its maximum potential as well, both in his movement and in the way he hits the shuttle as well. Very aggressive, um, doesn't hold back with his offense. So really look for that uh, to be how he can score his points against Edward tonight. Am I right, Ollie? Was it, was it fair enough to say that Oscar would be the favorite going into this? I would, yeah, at least I think from my understanding of their history in, in the juniors, he's had the, the rub of the wood, so to speak, um, in terms of the victories he's had over Edward over the years, but they haven't played a match for probably two and a half, three years or so now. So it'll be the first time in a long time that they've played each other, and I'm guessing both of them are pretty keen to prove a point. And, and therefore, then, it's the first time they would have met as senior players uh, in, in open competition, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, the, the, there'll be some bragging rights on the line, that's for sure. Uh, both out of North Harbour. So they'll uh, be very familiar with each other, uh, if only on the training court. Perhaps uh, less so of late, as Ollie has mentioned, in regards competitive matches. Trish Gubb is uh, our umpire for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Tiger Brokers Tigers, represented by Edward Lau. And on my left, Huawei Dragons, represented by Oscar Go. Tiger Brokers Tigers to serve. Love all. Play. to absorb that early on, early pressure from Edward Lau in that rally, using his reach really well. Out. Can't afford to be passive either, can he? I mean, he has to control Two. from, from the front of the court if he can. important is the depth that he gets on his lift. If he lifts a little bit short, he knows that he'll get punished, but that last one was a perfect example. He's got the power there too when he needs it. So, wow. Four. Very strong start. Love. And it's uh, Guo under real pressure. OK, 
Okay. And, uh, Service over. Let's go going around One. here. Five. Whilst Lau has the number one ranking, of course, Oscar Guo didn't play a lot last year, focused on his medical studies, so he might be thinking, hang on, hang on, fella, you haven't really earned that, so there'll be an edge to this. Oh, it doesn't fall. Two, five. into it. Oh. Oh. Goodness me, that's an opportunity. I was about Four, to say how lucky five. did Lau get, but he couldn't capitalise. Did all the hard work. It was amazing. He stayed in the Service rally over. and then just pushes that Six, one too long. Four. Yeah, good defensive skills from both players actually throughout that rally. but not players winning batches of points four or five at a time. Service over. Five, seven. Oscar does have that world ranking of 379, 379 in many singles. Oh. And any time Ollie, a New Zealander can talk about so a so world uh, ranking, you eight, know they're doing some good five. stuff. Uh, that's not bad going for a 19 year old in men's singles. I mean, what are you, in the Nine, 60s, in, in doubles, and whatever. so you know how tough that is to get that ranking up there. Yes, yeah, particularly uh, the pressure from Oscar as well. He hasn't really had the chance to, to get out on, on the circuit much outside of Oceania. Oh. I think neither did with Lau either, so it'll be an exciting Ten. game point five. next couple of years for men's singles in New Zealand. Quote, really game. never recovered from going down five love. First game won and by Edward Tiger Lau. Brokers. Tigers. That is really 11, impressive winning at 11 five. 5. And I have to say, he's looked very good doing it, but uh, it's, it's not been as close as we thought it was going to be. No, I think a very mature and composed first game performance from Edward Lau. He was able to absorb all the pressure from Moscow Grove really well. He got opened up a couple of times, but again, that was only on, on individual points as opposed to patches or Oscar was never really able to create any sustained pressure on him so a little bit of trouble here for the Dragons I think they can't really afford to to go too love behind this early on and what's a, a pretty important overall tie for them to try and get themselves back into the competition um, so this second game is really crucial uh, for their team tonight. 
both 19 year olds i remind you so this is uh, very much the the present and the future of new zealand badminton that we're watching both have decorated junior careers oscar's been out there on the the open circuit a little longer but as we've described uh, focused on his medical studies last year pre-med i think and now that he's uh, into his studies properly he's finding that balance between what will be a, a very arduous course of study and his badminton but he needs a better balance here for the next five minutes or so he's got to uh, find a, a few answers he's been tested by this man edward lau in control second game love all Play. Service over. One thing to be in front. One. It, it might be Love. another thing to close it out. The loud. Oh. We, we were talking off air before this, this match and One. we're not sure that oh. Edward Lau would, would ever have beaten Oscar Guo and if he has very few times Guo would have the advantage so this would be a huge scalp for Lau. Oh. Service over. Two. One. Yeah, I think the way he played the first set Edward Lau as well was really good his variety to be able to keep Oscar guessing and not let him anticipate to be able to put any real pressure on. It's exactly the right way that he needs to, he needs to play, but it's also it's over. Two. All. a style that takes composure both mentally and, and physically. You need to be relaxed um, and able to play the shuttle and make the sound decisions that are critical in the right time. drifting long but you can see what Lau's trying to do just mix it up in both rear court corners of Oscar Gore trying to keep him guessing at the back of the court there he's doing a pretty good job of it so far Gua noticeably taking his time here this is uh, proving a real physical test as well five two Defense from Oscar. Six. Two. Great racket control. Yeah, he got one chance to come in and play good quality net shot and he took it. 100 percent Wow, now very much in trouble. Seven. In two. this game anyway. Yeah, we talked earlier on about just being a fine line between being balanced variety and too passive and I think he's just a little bit passive at the moment good shot service over three seven certainly looking to Henry Tam for advice 
at every opportunity. Mistakes in a similar so it's fashion. over. Eight, three. Just pushing a number of shuttles beyond that baseline. Oh, lovely touch. So it's over. Is that not one of the hardest Four, shots to play? Eight. Cross court drop shot like that. Yeah, especially when Oscar's standing right of the net already. Phenomenal touch. Globe, but so a so very that. good rally. Nine, four. Play. This guy's not quite ready yet. It's over. Five, nine. Oh. Six. Up there and asking for an overall, but that's not going to happen. Not that far away from the umpire. Good patience. That brings up a game point so now to over. level this one up at one apiece. Ten. Game point six. So we are Game. going to go to a decider. Second game, won by Huawei Dragons, 11-6. One game, all. <laughs> Edward Lau just seemed to lose his way a little bit in that one. I'm not sure that Oscar necessarily lifted his game to any uh, great extent, but Lau just seemed to fall away a little bit. Yeah, just a fraction, I think, and a bit of both. I feel like Guo's attack was a little more measured in that said He wasn't quite as all-in aggression as he was in the, in the first game. and just played a little bit softer, was able to get the attack when he was in a bit better position as opposed to always reaching and trying a little bit too hard to, to force uh, the pressure as opposed to in that, that game there, he was giving himself easier opportunities to come with it and just being a bit more patient, waiting for the, the really big opportunity before he really put put the power in. But I think, yeah, Edward Lauer just gave him a few few more chances, a couple of easy ones over the back line, but it's enough, you know, 11, 6, 5 points. You put three out of the back line and suddenly a couple more and there's, uh, there's your 5-point deficit. So... I think important for Lau to find that balance again of variation being early on the net to control the rally and be able to put Oscar just a little bit in behind him uh, in the rear court so he doesn't have the chance to generate his full power. And then for Oscar as well to keep going the way he is with his measured approach to his offense that he's now got. It's interesting. I, I, in, in the bio information that the players uh, provide for us, uh, they're asked to, to give their advice for junior players. 
And I think this almost sums up the personalities of these two. Uh, Edward, well, well, I'll put it to you, Ollie. One of them says, seconds. train hard, never give up. The other one says, take seconds. risks. Can, can you tell me which is which? <laughs> Fellow Oscars don't take risks. Uh, you're, and, uh, you're bang on. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it just sums up their, their mindset a little bit, doesn't it, in terms of the way they play, the way they approach the game. Neither's right or wrong. It's just different, and it's wonderful to see mm. that clash of styles. So just combine all of that advice, you juniors that are watching. Train hard, never give up, and Final take game. some risks. Love all. Play. Well, never give up. We uh, certainly Wait. did not during that rally. But. One. Love. Uh, are we seeing, though, a bit of a surge here now from Guo? Just flexing his... Uh, Muscles a little. Yeah, his quality at the net since the end of the first game as well has been sublime. Every time he's played a tight spinning net shot, he's been able to generate a really short lift, which with his power is really, really dangerous. So I think perhaps Edward can look to play a little bit into the court, even though it's not really his style or his strength as well is, is to play really well, really tight at the net. But I think it might be something he might just have to concede a little bit uh, for the greater good in this third game. Certainly his most his more dangerous of, of his two rear court corners is that round the head corner for him where he hit that smash from. But yeah, the, the way he stayed in that rally during the middle stages there especially, he's really starting to find his range. Oh, he got that one wrong. He lifted and allowed his there to so bounce. Over. One, three. sense that Glow could put this game away very quickly here. Lau needs to hang tough. Yeah, well played. Two, three. Again, good control from now making Goro's court really big on the other side. this match and I imagine Edward is 
justice focused on victory. Open himself up a little bit with that last cross got smashed there to Oscar Gua. He wasn't doing that in the second game. It's a subtle difference, but when these guys have played each other so many times, it's the small margins that are going to decide it. A superb run of Seven, points. Four. A real purple Time patch out, of form Huawei here. Dragons. And uh, Ricky Olsen Sigmund has uh, seen enough for the moment. Calls time out to try and call a, a halt to this. Edward Loud. Gosh, I, I, it just seems like moments ago it was looking like Oscar Guo was more capable of running away with this. And what a response from Lau. Yeah, he certainly lifted in the last three to four rallies. Real effort to be a little bit earlier on the net and try and take control from the serve return situation as well, um, generating the angles that he's got from the back of the court too, been really effective there using his power, but mostly the, the steep angle that's been able to uh, really pay dividends for him in this last sort of surge of points that he's put on the board. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. And he has looked to Henry Tam for advice. He's been very open to receiving that support and coaching throughout the uh, the match, which Seven, is great four. to see. Both players will be Play. looking for guidance, of course. Oh, this is quality. We are watching some brilliant badminton, and we really are. Five. Seven. <laughs> oh. Service over. Eight. Five. Wow. Three points away from arguably one of the biggest wins of his young career. Again, goes looking for a word of encouragement from Henry Tam. Is ever Five. closer, and Oscar Five. gets a little more grouchy. You've got to hand it to Edward Lau, the, the net that he's been playing in this third set. I talked about it earlier. I was, had it totally wrong. He's completely outplayed Guo at the net throughout this third game. Stunning, absolutely stunning. What a way to bring up match points. 10, match point, 5. When you Edward. think both Quick players towel. have already been defeated in this competition by Abhinav Manota, the court. men's singles game is in such good health. It really is, and this has been a brilliant exhibition. Now, Edward Lau with five match points. And he's done it. Game. He has done it. The acknowledgement.
from Oscar Guo, ever the great sportsman that he is, these two 19-year-olds, how many more clashes are they going to have over the years? What a stunning performance. Match and one the Tiger, by Tiger Brokers, Brokers Tigers, Tigers in control of 11, the tie. 5, 6, but in 11, isolation, 11, 5. this was quality and well played, Edward Lau. Yeah, I think this, that was the first of many, many high-quality encounters we're going to see between these two players in years to come. But full credit to the performance that Edward Lau put in over those, especially in the first and third games there. Perhaps it drifted a little bit from his game plan in the second. But man, the control that he was able to use, the way he maneuvered Oscar around the court, varying nicely from the, both the front and the rear court, exploiting both of Oscar's rear court corners, just mixing that up so he couldn't use his power uh, to really put any pressure on Edward himself. But a really polished, really mature performance from such a young man. So looking forward to the future of New Zealand men's singles with him. And he's with Andrew for his comments now. Well, we, we don't give him time to catch his breath. Uh, he's still breathing heavily here, but uh, Edward, congratulations, mate. First of all, superb game from both of you. Wonderful badminton. How big is that for you, though? You're just 19 years of age. How big is that for you and all the badminton you've played so far? Wonderful win. Yeah, I think that gave me a lot of confidence because I've missed him quite a lot, but I don't end up with the win. So this is like a big confidence booster. How many times have you won in all your clashes through juniors? How many? I'm going to put you on the spot. Is that your first one? Oh, it's not the first one, but it's like not many against them. Yeah. And and you guys are, are likely to have such a great rivalry going forward. So this is good, isn't it, for the game? Yeah, I think it's good for like our, our country as well. We can push each other and make our country better. And, and of course not forgetting money in the, in the background there as well. What was the key for you? Uh, Ollie was talking about it during the match saying that, that your touch at net in particular in that third game, that you bossed the net, you, you controlled the rallies. Did, did you feel that? Yeah, that was the game plan, to get the net first and take it early and take the control from there. Well done, wonderful win. Thank you. Wow, superb stuff. Uh, great badminton from uh, Edward Lau. And of course, in the context of the tie, it puts the Tiger Brokers Tigers now to love up in this one and in complete control of the Huawei Dragons. But there's more great badminton still to come. And up next, it is the turn of the women's in singles.
Well, welcome back uh, to uh, Oitakari Stadium that certainly has both teams still a buzz. Uh, uh, that uh, match that we just witnessed. A superb uh, display of men's singles badminton. And uh, taken out by Edward Lau over Oscar Guo in uh, three thrilling games. But uh, just a final quick word on that one as we uh, have a look at the, the state of uh, this match, uh, Ollie. Uh, it was close, it was tight, but really Lau was in, in complete control, it seemed. Oh, the, when he executed his game plan, I think that the way he, he described again post-match with you, that to be early on the net and, and control the way he did, it was a yeah, phenomenal performance from someone uh, at his age as well. So the two 19-year-olds, uh, that battle goes the way of Edward Lau, means they're two love up in the tie. Still plenty of opportunity, though, as we see the order of play for the Dragons to get back into this. Remember, they are uh, looking for their first win in the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. We're going to see women's singles momentarily, followed by men's and women's doubles, and then we round it out with that sixth game, the mixed doubles. If we're 3-3, we go to a golden game. At the moment, though, the Tigers are suggesting we will not be 3-3 at the end of the night. Let's welcome our women's singles players to the court here at the Waitakere Badminton Stadium. This is uh, a match that uh, many of us, Ollie, you and I and uh, others in the production team and the officials, we kind of looked at this as being probably the highlight of the night. We've just seen a really good match, but uh, Sally Fu and uh, Shauna Lee both unbeaten so far in this competition. And uh, we are talking the players currently ranked at one and two in the country. You'll receive on that side. Thank you. Should, uh, Bramley is the umpire for this one. Simon Lynn, the service judge. There's certainly an edge in experience for Sally Fu, but uh, even she is just 21 years of age. It seems incredible to think that she's uh, by a long way the most experienced of these two players. Clearly focused on women's singles and women's doubles at mixed doubles ranking. It's of little consequence here. It's uh, the first two that we should take most uh, notice of. Of course, they played for New Zealand in the Sertiman Cup in the last two editions. And there is Shauna Lee, who is the current number one at just 16 years of age. Also loves to uh, play a bit of volleyball. And you can see she'd be pretty handy at that too with that uh, taller frame at 1.7 metres tall. And uh, she is a player, Ollie, that's impressed me through the Learn Coach New Zealand League that she appears undaunted. I, I don't think she'll be nervous about this clash. I think she'll welcome it. Yeah, I agree. I think she yeah, so embraces any challenge that comes away, which is yeah, and shows a real maturity for just being 16 uh, years of age. But I think she also has a game style that, that can cause problems uh, for Sally tonight with the angles that she creates and the touch that she has. She's able to really use all angles of the court, and Sally's going to really have to cover um, a lot of ground and we have to work really hard for her points this evening. Uh, are we seeing a similar contrast to, to the one we saw in the men's singles? It, it's almost in reverse, though, isn't it, with uh, uh, the, the Dragons against the Tigers here? Is it Sally Fu more with the power game? Absolutely, yeah. That's definitely where she's most dangerous. She's able to get herself out of trouble using that power as well, but also score her points from that. Ready I to think play. Shauna Lee's a little more creative uh, than comparing it to Edward Lau, for example. Um, still just as stable, but able to generate a few more angles and touch of the net to a level that yeah perhaps Edward's a bit more stable. Well, it goes without saying and you know whenever anyone says that they're about to say it anyway. It goes without saying the Dragons have to get on the board here. They, they, they need very much need for their team's chances for Sean Ali to win this one. Yeah I think looking at the at the remaining matches tonight it really needs to be the next three matches for the Dragons that they need to, to secure. Okay, so uh, let's go there then. So you, you are saying the mixed doubles, the last match, you're going to favour Lau and Villegas very much in, in that match? I would, yeah. Okay. I think they're, they're on, on paper. I mean, again, three games to 11. Anything can happen, to put the disclaimer out there. But, uh, yeah, on paper, looking at that one, I think they're, they're heavy favourites in that match. Okay, so... 
just about ready to get this women's singles underway. Tigers leading the tie to love. Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Tiger Brokers Tigers, represented by Sally Fu. On my left, Huawei Dragons, represented by Shauna Lee. Huawei Dragons to serve. Love all. Play. of quick points here to get the match underway. Over. Four. Two. Over. Four. Five. The players uh, perhaps are struggling for rhythm and consistency in the match so it's far. Over. But already Six. we're beyond the halfway point Four. in this first game. effective for Shauna Lee. Seven. Four. of Sally Fu as she won that so over. Five, eight. I'm sure that she's overly pleased with the 
way she's performing so far. That won't help either. It's over. Nine. Five. Yeah, it's also the third time that Sean Lee scored a winner in that corner for Sally Fruit. Body language not good, whilst for Shauna Lee. Ten. Game point. Five. Stamping her authority on this one. Out. It's over. Six. Ten. Game. Well, that kind of sums it up. Just, uh, First game won by Huawei Dragon. Fully engaged in, in the moment, in, in the match. And, and Sally Fu needs to adjust really quickly here. Otherwise, this is going to be over very quickly. Yeah, just needs to settle in, I think, and try, try and play some longer rallies. Maybe, you know, Sean Lee hits it on the floor, but that's better than putting 6 7 out. Um, and giving three points as she did in that first game there. I don't think tactically there's, there's much we can really read into that so far. I think Shauna Lee's been made a real effort to make Sally Fu run the diagonals from corner to corner as opposed to straight, cover a bit more ground and a real effort to attack her in the backhand corner at the front of the court as we saw with two or three points that she managed to score there. But yeah, good signs if you're a Dragons fan, I guess, in terms of getting their team back into the match in the way that Shauna Lee performed in that first game been so impressive throughout this uh, learn coach New Zealand badminton league uh, on and off court a very mature young lady for just 16 years of age we mentioned coming into this match uh, neither of us thought she would be daunted at all by the prospect of of playing Sally tonight her number one ranking obviously underlines her talent but when you're 16 you kind of sometimes have to pinch yourself and think, do I really belong at this level? Do I really deserve that ranking? And the answer is pretty obvious at the moment. Shauna Lee, uh, women's singles champion at the Oceania Junior Champs. 2019. 20 seconds. And of course, 20 seconds. New Zealand singles title last year. Second game. Level. Sally Fu Play. needs to make some adjustments. Lovely. So I'll tell you what, so Shauna Lee was up pretty quickly there. It still needed a very Over. good shot to win the rally. One. Love. from Shauna Lee to play that combination so put it Sally in the forehand deep in her rear court and bring her diagonal to the backhand front court Out. two one Mixing it up between those two corners and having a lot of success uh, in doing so. Three, one.
It's over. Two. Three. She Three. may have been out of sorts. Oh. She's quality, and it won't take much to shift momentum back in her favour for Sally Foo. It's over. Four. Three. Over four all. It's over five four. There's the power. Over five all. Oh. Over six five. Its scoreboard's not working. There from Sally Fu. Tips over. Six. All. So that's a momentary lapse in the scoreboard is uh, repaired. Six all is correct. This is where Sean Lee's got to be on guard. Seven. If Sally Fu gets into six. the third game, it is game on. Over seven, all. Six over eight, seven. Consistencies oh. continue to come off the Thu racket. Here's a piece of brilliance. It's over. Nine. Self a lifeline. Game here. point eight. Oh, that is class. Game. That's the sort of badminton that uh, perhaps saw her coming into this game as, as Second a game won by favorite. Tiger Brokers Tigers 11 8. And going One into game, game three now, the danger for Shauna Lee is forget what's happened. Get these first two if Sally Fu strings together six or seven very good points she'll be hard to beat yeah just sort of found her range a little bit more with the weapons and, and the back end of that second game not particularly long rallies I don't think so no. it'll be if Shauna Lee can actually come out and, and just hang in there a little bit longer when under the offense that Sally Fu's coming with then who knows maybe she'll start to see a few more mistakes come back off the racket of, of Sally Fu but 
Again, from a Dragons perspective, I don't think you change a heck of a lot. You're still having success scoring uh, points in the, the forehand, sorry, the backhand front court of, of Sally Fu and keep chipping away with that diagonal that she's been playing and, and moving her around the court, trying to diffuse the offense and the, and the power that she comes with. So just maybe slightly better decisions of when to lift and the, and the height of the lift from, from Sean Lee to be able to take time away from Sally Fu at the back of the court and just take away those weapons that she has. Certainly, uh, Sally Fu welcomed this format. Uh, she spoke about uh, the short scoring nature of the uh, Learn Coach League as being one of the real attractions uh, for her, suggesting that it uh, brings a lot of pressure on the players, but she welcomes that. So she has no issues at all with the format. And, well, Shauna Lee's just 16. She, she, she doesn't care. She's a 16 year old having fun playing badminton and. and right up there is one of the very best in the country so this this game three is going to be fascinating does Fu continue to lift her level Final game. or can Lee refine oh. her best form game on remember Play. the Tigers lead the tie to love Over. One. Love. Oh. Oh. Throughout the evening, so over. We're looking for One. the Crystal Ashley Design Four. MVP. The player that has contributed most to the Over. team's victory. Two, one. Four, or unforced errors. One. So Lee's just got to hang tough here, doesn't she? Continue to make food play. Yeah, absolutely. The longer the rally goes on, the more likely it seems that Lee's going to come out. One. Time out. Tiger Brokers, Tigers. Okay, so uh, Henry Tam recognising, and he's been very good all of the coaches have through this competition. They have one timeout per match. And he's chosen now to uh, just slow proceedings, have a chat. We could uh, still afford to wait any longer at 1-5 in the decider. Yeah, the message is it has to be patience, doesn't it? <laughs> Shauna Lee, back out there, ready to go. Five, one, play. It's over. Two, five. when a timeout has changed momentum dramatically. Three, five. It's been a winner, hasn't it, for Lee? It's over. Six, three. Over. Four. Six. Still 
in the balance. Over. Seven. Four. Anticipation in the right place, the right time, and then having the courage to play the power. It's over. Five. Seven. That was a big point, wasn't it? Six. Seven. How important is Sally Fu's experience going to be here? Seven, all, timeout, Huawei Dragons. And I, I think we've seen in the last two or three rallies, Sally Fu as engaged in this match as she ever has been at any stage. Yeah, seems to be playing with a lot, a lot more purposefully in the last sort of four or five rallies since that timeout, just taking it a bit more too shortly, putting more pressure on at the back of the court. She's obviously forced a few mistakes as well. But yeah, I think it's the most aggressive yet patient uh, we've seen her in the entire match so far. And this would uh, take the Tigers if Fu can somehow win this. I say somehow because Shauna Lee's looked a favourite for the majority of the match, it seems. But if Sally Fu times her run, fair play to her. It would put the Tigers three love up. Seven all. Play. Suddenly, that's starting to look very likely. Eight, seven. Oh, lovely touch by Lee. Over. Eight. All. Dicing <laughs> oh. <laughs> with danger. Would Lee have done more as soon as that shuttle dropped so Over. low? Could Lee have been Nine. more forward at me? Eight. Oh, I think she was as far forward as she probably could have been. She just got caught sleeping a little bit, but... <laughs> this is remarkable. Ten. Match she point. has looked out of sorts Eight. at times, but somehow finds her way through to two match points. Goodness me, look at the reaction from her teammates. Sally Fu. I mean, Shauna Lee has done very little wrong and competed superbly. But have we just seen a very good player find a way to win? Match one by when Tiger Brokers Tigers. 6-11, 11-8, 11-8. Over. Yeah, 100%, I think. Yeah, that's a real hallmark of, of a player's quality when you can see, uh, I'm sure Sally Fu won't mind me saying this, that probably wasn't her best performance but she still managed to find a way to win and, and that's what good players do being able to use the experience that you've built up over the years to make some decisions and, and just fight it was really really gutsy from her I think Shauna Lee played a great game especially in the first set tactically uh, really solid in the way that she was able to exploit uh, Sally Fu's slight perhaps uh, vulnerability in, in the movement by making a run from the forehand rear court to the to the backhand front court and, and scoring a lot of points there. But again, blood under Sally with her experience and the way that she fought through that one. Uh, she's with Andrew for her comments just now. Thanks, uh, Ollie. Uh, 
Gosh, Sally, we, I, I know you'll take this the right way. Ollie and I don't think you've played that well, but you found a way to win. Is, is that a fair comment? Yeah, that is a fair comment. I think I made a few mistakes during that game and could have played a lot better, but I think I made my way through it, so it was good. What changes were you trying to make? What, what were you talking to your coach about uh, to try and turn it around? What did you need to change in that third game? Um, I think I just needed to be more patient and just like rally it out, maybe let her make the mistakes more and just play my game. And then in the big moments, I mean those last two or three points, that, that was you at your best, you, you, you found your rhythm. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I definitely feel a lot uh, like tired now, but like towards the end, I think I got um, the adrenaline from the team and that kind of like pushed me and yeah. It's a big part of it, isn't it? Because uh, the reaction, you've just put your team three love up in, in the tie. So that team aspect is really coming through, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think the team's quite happy with it and hopefully we win the next game. They should be happy. Well done, Sally Fu. Uh, finding a way to win, as great players do, may not have played her best, but found a way to get over the line. And extending that lead now for the Tiger Brokers Tigers out to three love. Still three matches to come, though. Stay with us on the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. Welcome back to the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League as uh, we are watching a very one-sided tie unfold. Uh, although uh, we've seen already on previous nights of this competition that teams uh, can come back at you, but the Tigers, well, they couldn't be happier at three love in this one on the back of uh, those singles victories for Edward Lau and now Sally Fu. 
Of course, uh, earlier we saw Dakman Vong and Janice Jiang win the opening mixed doubles, but uh, we now have men's doubles and women's doubles, and clearly the Dragons need to win both to take this tie through to the final match tonight. Remember, 3-3 gets them into a golden game. But let's uh, welcome our men's doubles players out on court here at Waitakere in this Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League clash. Coming into this, if uh, if the Dragons, who are we, Dragons are looking for uh, straws to clutch at, uh, their record, uh, Jeffrey and Sajasa, is 1 1, whilst Jonathan Curtin and Dakman Vong are yet to win. So, as I say, that, that might be uh, uh, <laughs> stretching things a little bit, so they need to find any positive news Pink they place. can at the moment, the Dragons. Adam, black or green? Black call. Cool. Green. You'll surf. Adam will receive, and you happy on that side? Okay. Simon Lynn is our umpire for this one, and Trish Gubb is the service judge. And so we get the opportunity now to uh, welcome these players. Of course, we've already seen Dylan and Dagman out on court tonight. And there's Jonathan Curtin, left handed. We've seen a few already tonight, so the likes of. Uh, Oscar Guo being uh, one of them, but uh, with a men's doubles ranking of four. It uh, brings a, a level of experience as well. Dylan Sajasa for the Dragons, I mentioned, has already been out there and uh, it's uh, pushed to the limit and eventually losing that opening uh, mixed doubles, ranked second in the country in men's doubles. His partner is Adam Jeffrey at 19 years of age. Those rankings perhaps are reflected in uh, his recent emergence into uh, senior ranks out of uh, junior badminton. This, uh, the current New Zealand under-19 men's doubles champion, Dakman Vong at 20. He's uh, very much a doubles uh, specialist, as you can see from the rankings, also 20 years of age. Oliver Leighton Davis alongside again for this one. Welcome and Andrew Dewhurst with you for this uh, coverage on Sky Sport and Sky Sport Next of the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. Wonderful initiative on the back of Ready to uh, play. Uh, coronavirus to uh, provide an opportunity for New Zealand's best talents, emerging talent, to uh, gain some vital exposure in front of uh, some of the country's best coaches and really is proving to be a, a superb initiative from Badminton New Zealand. Ollie, which way do you see this one going? Is there any way to separate these two pairings on paper? Results-wise, I think it's difficult to, to say. Styles-wise, we're looking definitely at, at two different pairs, and, and Jeffrey and Sojas are both similar style players. Obviously, Jeffrey's a little bit taller, so he can use the height advantage from the back. So look for Dylan to maybe take the lead towards the net a little bit more, but both Ladies strong in the mid and front court, whereas with... Tiger Brokers Tigers. Represented by Jonathan Curtin, Dakman Vong. <laughs> On my left, Huawei Dragons. Represented by Adam Jeffrey, Dylan Sajosa. <laughs> Tiger Broker Tigers to serve. Jonathan Curtin to Adam Jeffrey. Love all. Play. I think from the Tiger side. One love. Dakman's more the backcourt player and Jonathan Curtin's more suited to the front. It's over. Dylan One started to make four. a move towards the shuttle, but uh, that fooled his playing partner. He's never going to get there. Lead from Curtin. Two, one. A good placement of the serve from Dakman Vong. Three, one. Of course, the serve return situation is so important. 
and any doubles, and especially men's. Loose the Dragons, they're on the board. And two, just the one behind three. now, at two, three. support Four, vital in this competition two. they are essentially the fans it's not a competition that has been open to the public in this post-covid environment five two certainly of the uh, three weeks of this competition so far. And uh, so that will affect the speed of the shuttle and will suit some players Seven. over others. Three. Yeah, I and mean, again, it shouldn't affect it too much. It's just a... Uh, more the, the flight as opposed to the speed if I could try and explain that subtle difference Four, it just hangs in the air seven. a little bit longer feels a little bit heavier uh, off the racket and cooler temperatures Burton and Bong looking Eight. impressive here Four. won the point the dragons but it was interesting i'm not sure they were alert to that because they whether by default or by design they didn't play a shot towards vong did they six eight no i couldn't hit in about the next six so i don't think the dragons were were quite aware of what was going on the Dragons, one of those critical points. Nine, six. Seven, eight is so much better than six, nine. <laughs> I, I should add, if you're losing, it is so much better. Ten. For Kurt game and Vaughn, six. It brings up game point now. They win it comfortably. Curtin and Vong just combining nicely, not having to do anything First too extraordinary. Game Tiger Brokers Tigers, 11 6. Just playing good, uh, balanced men's doubles, knowing their respective roles and uh, combining pretty well. Uh, Jeffrey and Sajar. So we saw a couple of times they, they, they let a shuttle fall into open court, both thinking the other was going for it, just not quite on the same page, are they? No, I think you said it right. That I think we've seen a market improvement from Vong and Curtin just combining better and better over the last couple of weeks. Um, and we're seeing that tonight, just using the advantages that you have in a right-left-hand combination um, a little bit better and starting to work around each other and make each other more dangerous as opposed to being confused. And 
and we've seen that a couple of times yeah from from the dragons pair so i think look for them to try and play a little bit softer and, and move forward dakman vong especially is quite happy to to play hard and, and slightly upwards so if they can play it down in front of him with a, a little bit of pace into it and invite the shot to come upwards but still flat uh, back to the rackets and they can start to, to make a few inroads but just a little bit too defensive i think as well from from the dragons at the moment okay they need to try and turn the tide here second game love all play just long service. it's over one love of times in that rally as well that the back player of the Dragons pair just not quite keeping up. Just explain that. Yeah, so the, the front player is really good to, to take the initiative, but it's important for the back player to fill the hole in the space that they leave uh, behind them quite quickly. Oh. And I imagine, Ollie, that sometimes you just need time for, for that sort of instinctive combination to, to work, knowing the tendencies of your partner as to what sort of a shot they'll play in certain situations. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, it's saw a pretty quick adjustment in, in that rally from, from both of them. Obviously, time helps when you play together to feel that, Three, that adjustment but two. it's up to the back player to react quickly to the front player because literally they can see what's happening. Oh. And Jeffrey hoping more than anything that that was going to go Three, wide. Oh. And his hopes were dashed. Only 4-3, just the one-point lead, but Four, Curtin and three. Bong seem to be in control. Timeout. And uh, I Huawei think Dragon. Ricky Olsen Zegerman, I, I think she agrees. Just sensing that they still haven't made the necessary adjustments here. Yeah, still doing a lot of defending uh, the Dragons pair, but especially with the playing styles that they have when you can use the speed of movement together to kind of try and close down the front two-thirds of the court and be aggressive there. We saw one rally where they did it, I think was it was at 3-2, when they were able to, to close the court fast and, and be aggressive and then both the mid and the front court, really important, especially when neither of them have a, a huge amount of power from the back line. It's still okay to hit it down, they can give it a reasonable whack, but no one's the Oscar Guo uh, power that, that he has, he has, for example, so it's really important they can close down the front two-thirds of the court. together as well, not just as an individual. It's over. Four, four. wanted the court to open up and swallow it. <laughs> it's four. not going their way, is it? Service over. Hanging tough, though. Five, four. win this, they tie. win the tie. They're already three love up.
a big moment now in the race to 11. Curtin and Vong are on the cusp. It's a curious rally because at times it seemed both pairings were at sixes and sevens, but they kept finding a way to stay in it. And that uh, takes Curtin and Dakman Vong now to two points from victory. Yeah, great aggression, especially in, in defense from both pairs throughout that rally. We saw the offense change five or six times. Yeah, throughout it. But in the end, it was a, a terrific counter attack from Dakman Vong that finished it off. But the Tigers pair especially been really solid in the defense and they're able to move the Dragons players left and right on the back line, just creating Nine, space for themselves eight, to play the counter-attack into. It's been really, really impressive from them throughout. Well set up by Jeffrey. Pounced on the return of serve. I think uh, that might have been a, a string as well for... Fong, I think again. Nine all. Well, much like Sally Fu for the Tigers earlier, can Sajasa and Jeffrey somehow scramble into a game three and uh, go on to win? to the tension. Give Jeffrey and Sajasa a sniff at this. They will desperately want to close this out. And they do. And they do, and that wraps up victory for the Tiger Brokers Tigers with two matches still to play. They are up for love in the tie, courtesy of a, a comprehensive win, even with the 12-10 margin in game two. Curtin and Vong always look the better of the pairings and uh, deservedly win this one. Match so, one by Tiger, Tiger Brokers, Brokers Tigers. Tigers. 11, 6, 12, 10. If you've played your game, if you've done, you can relax. There's no golden game here tonight, but that, that was very impressive.
Yeah, great performance from both Curtin and Vong from the Tiger Brokers Tigers. I think they were really clinical in, in the way they performed tonight. We can see the improvements that they made and, and the benefits of playing together over these first couple of weeks have really uh, showing now and using the advantages that come with the right and left hand combination able to play the front player in, in a lot more dangerous situations and getting a lot of shuttles back um, to where they want them to be coming back to. So great performance from them to secure the win from the Tigers. Now deal with Andrew for their comments. Thanks, uh, Ollie. Well, well done, guys. Uh, am I right? That's the first win for you guys in this, this tournament, so you must be pleased to get that monkey off the back. Definitely. It's good to get on the board, especially when it's a winning match for the team. Yeah, and you guys are well aware of that, aren't you? You knew that that was going to win the uh, the match for the team. Yeah, we had uh, good motivation from like all the other matches before, so yeah, it was good. Have you guys played together much at all prior to coming into the Learn Coach competition? Uh, a little bit, a little bit last year, but we've never partnered up for a longer period of time. Are, are you liking what you're seeing now, Dakman? The, the combination and, and the way you guys are combining? Yeah, I think we're working well together now. It's good. Good stuff. It gives you a lot of confidence. The team can relax now. There's still two matches to play, but I guess if you're done for the night, you can relax. No golden game. But uh, well done, guys. Very good win. Thank you. So the Tiger Brokers Tigers are very much in control of this one now. They've won it. Uh, we still have two matches to play and they are going to be good fun to watch. So stay with us because next up I can see the, uh, the women's doubles teams getting ready to come out on court. Welcome back into the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League where uh, this one, it, it's most unlike all of our uh, matches played 
so far in this competition in that it is done and dusted. Uh, everything until this point has gone to the final match on the night, but uh, the Tiger Brokers Tigers at 4Love have put this one to bed. There are still two matches to play, and uh, they will be hard fought, no doubt, as the uh, Huawei Dragons look to uh, gain some pride here tonight at the Waitakere Badminton Centre. Our final match is the mixed doubles, Jeffrey and Tan, a new combination up against Lau and Villegas. But first up, it is the women's doubles as we welcome our players out onto our show court. No wonder they're cheeky, no wonder their spirits are up. The uh, Tiger Brokers Tigers with uh, Justine Villegas very happily taking to the court. It, it's, it's not bad, is it, Oliver Layden Davis, when the match, the night, is won before you even turn up. This is Justine's first match tonight, yeah. and already the tie's uh, done and dusted, so no wonder she's happy. Trish Gubb is our umpire for this one with Richard Bramley, service judge. It's, uh, could so easily have been much closer though, couldn't it? The first three matches, uh, three games. So it's not like we've seen a complete whitewash here. Black it is, your choice. Who will receive? Shauna to receive. So, Bajent, thank you. Yeah, looking back on those first three matches, like you say, it could easily be 2-2 be at the moment. Uh, uh, the way those played out, three tight, three game matches, it could easily have gone uh, and finished differently. So I guess that's the nature of this short sharp um, scoring system you know small margins are going to define the winners there is uh, Shauna Lee for the Dragons and uh, she might be one that looks back on tonight and thinks you know I, I had Sally Fu where I wanted her in the singles so she gets a chance for a little revenge in the women's doubles currently ranked at fourth in the country in this discipline there is Sally who by her own admission we thought so I was brave enough to ask her and she agreed that she didn't play that well but won the match. So she too will look to just improve her level in this uh, doubles, currently ranked at number one in women's doubles. Her partner is uh, Justine Villegas, 24 years of age. It's uh, a player who loves to uh, boss that in front of the court. It's a touch game around the net. Very consistent performer. Uh, closest to us here for the Dragons, Alyssa Tagle. 20 years of age and ranked at number one. So we have the, the two number one ranked players in women's doubles on opposite sides of the court. So that in itself tells you something about the quality of this one. Ready to play. Ever we wanted the team aspect of this highlighted, it was uh, the reaction to that win of Curtin and Bong. Uh, everyone knew, didn't they, the uh, significance of that and what was on the line, as did the players that were on the floor. They weren't just playing for themselves and their own records. They knew they were going to help their team to victory. And, of course, that gives the Tigers a a three-point lead at the top of the table in the overall competition as well, be it maybe temporarily with the, the next match coming up tomorrow night. But it's still nice to, to be knowing that you're definitely going to be leading uh, at the end of this round. All teams will play each other twice. So two round-robin competitions, and then the, the top two on the points table will play off in the final. And uh, positions three and four will be decided as well, but uh, you only want to be in that 1v2 matchup, that's for sure. Get the lion's share of the $15,000 prize Ladies money. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Tiger Brokers. Tigers represented by Sally Fu and Justine Villegas. And on my left, Huawei Dragons represented by Shauna Lee and Alyssa Tagle. Tiger Broker Tigers to serve. Justine Villegas to Shauna Lee. Love all. Play. Yep. Both these combinations are coming to over. tonight's one. match Love. with a 1-1 one, one record.
service over. One, all. Taking all the pace out Three, of the shuttle. One. Service over. Four, three. Service over. Four, all. Service over. Five. Neither four. Hearing able to string two, three, four points, winning points together anyway. play at the net from Villegas. Looking dangerous to the bracket, but choosing to take the speed out of the shot. Service over. Six, seven. Good tussle, this one, though. straight away that wasn't the best shot she's ever played. that she Seven. wants to remember too much, Justine Villegas, and Lee and Tagle now just nudge in front. Was 
a missed opportunity. How crucial might that Service be? Service over. Eight, nine. On a night when you are four love down in the tie, that just sort of sums up the way things are going for the Dragons. Most curious rally. I think players Nine. thought it stopped about oh. three times. Yeah, There's confusion from both pairs, wasn't it? Sorry. Sorry. So you think you switched? Yes, you have. Thank you. Sally, Sally too. Nothing's getting past her. I've noticed that uh, Lee and Tagle are on the wrong sides. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Service over. Ten. Game point. Nine. Uh, that scoreboard incorrect is the Dragons in front here. They do win it. Okay. They do win it. They need something to go their way here, the Huawei Dragons. And they get their noses in front in this First women's game doubles. won by Huawei Dragons, 11-9. Oh, there is perhaps a, a more relaxed ear to this one, knowing that the tie is, is done and dusted. And, and that may be why we're, we're seeing a few rather curious rallies. But uh, for the Dragons' sake, it, it's now not just about tonight, is it? It's about their next match as well. It, it's giving themselves some confidence and just getting some wins on the board. Yeah, precisely, and about getting a little bit of visible reward, I guess, for the, for the hard work that they've done. Like they were close last week. They've been close every week so far. Even tonight, though, they might be behind four love. They haven't been without their chances, and I'm sure Coach Regasiwin will um, agree with me there. But, it's yeah, it's about trying to come away with maybe a 4-2 loss tonight, but... At least you've got a bit of momentum um, and a bit of confidence that you can still get a couple of wins on the board uh, moving into next week's matches. Especially for some of the younger players, and there are so many of them in this competition. And we're seeing one there on the left of uh, our screen, Shauna Lee, at just 16 years of age. Looks quite relaxed. That's a tackle uh, having already lost in the mixed with Dylan Sajasa and Shauna going down against Sally Fu in the women's singles. So both would just Second love game. to get a win. Love all. Play. One. Love. Yeah, I think we're seeing the, the Tigers players being given a, a bit of a license to play with here. Good opportunity for Service them to over. just one all again try a few things to try and build on the partnership that they're developing and again with a bit longer term perspective and to try and develop a few more strengths and agreements that they can perhaps put in service fault called too high service over it's pretty rare isn't it ollie these days two uh, one richard bramley calling fault yes yeah, I think obviously the, the introduction of the fixed height service rule um, would have been a couple of years ago now is... Wow. The Dragons looked so at the umpire, but there was nothing wrong with Two. it. Two. All. Lily Agus knew nothing about it, mind you. Uh, of course, the, the key criteria there I means you have to take a swing at the shuttle. Just finish on that serve assumption as well with that, that rule. It's over. Three, two. Yes, obviously the fixed service height rule at 1 metre 15 came in a couple of years ago to a lot of outcry initially. Um,
especially from, from taller players, as people can probably appreciate. Um, it's a little bit, bit easier that players that are a bit smaller in stature are able to pull the serve up a little bit, whereas the taller players had to find a way to serve from a bit lower down. But it, it certainly took away the ambiguity of the serve having to be made contact with below your bottom rib, so where that was on a lot of players was obviously different, um, but also up to a more subject to interpretation, whereas the one metre rule, one metre 15, sorry. Oh. There's a lot less confusion about it, and it's a lot easier for Good. the service Over. judge to, Three, five. to make a ruling of, and it's also, it's opened up uh, the game to a few different serves as well in the past. Obviously, the, the drive serve or the flat serve down the, the centre of the court was kind of frowned upon and deemed unsportsmanlike. But well, I think a large part of that uh, perception was down Five. to the fact that it was sub so subjective to being judged by the service judge of the height of it. So it's almost become part of, of regular play now and I think players have just simply had to adjust and, and they have. Six, five. Lee and Taggle just needed to arrest that uh, momentum. They've done so, six, five they lead. Terrific angle to finish that point off. Also to keep the speed in it. <laughs> oh, look how much it means to Melissa Tagle. They desperately want to close this out. And the 
Dragons are alive. They are alive. They're on the board. They'll lose this tie tonight, but that was important for their confidence. And well played, Sean and Lee and Alyssa Tagle. Nine and nine, they win over Fu and Villegas. And uh, we spoke about Match it. won by Huawei Dragons, 11-9. 11-9. Uh, these are consolation points, but uh, they're points that might have a bearing later on in the Learn Coach New Zealand League. Yeah, especially when we're seeing pairs that haven't played together much. They just get more, more time on court together. Again, it's another chance to develop and perhaps implement things that you've been working on from the week before. So good win from Sean Lee and Alyssa Tagle to get the Dragons on, on the board tonight. Um, sort of felt that Sally Fu and Justine Villegas had a, a bit of a license to be a bit more creative and I take nothing away from the performance from, from the Dragons pair when I say that. So well done for, to them to being a little more consistent I guess across the, the course of the match and getting to the Dragons off to build an, a bit of momentum uh, into next week's match. That with Andrew uh, for their comments now. Thanks Ollie. Um, well done guys. Come on in. Come on in. You're on the board. I, I, I could see how much that meant to you. You just wanted to get on the board, didn't you? Yeah, for sure. Um, we really wanted to finish off with at least one game. And it was quite disappointing um, at the start, but yeah, glad to get one on the board. I mean, it might be 4-1 in, in the score, but it's been a lot closer than that. You, you guys feel that you're getting closer to getting over the line? Because these games earlier on tonight, Shauna, they were going to three games, but you just couldn't quite close them out. So this one must feel especially good. Uh, yeah, it's been happening to us a lot recently, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's quite disappointing, but we are unlucky quite often. And yeah, I guess we just look forward to the next high and the next game, obviously. And, and that was a chance as a combination to continue to work on, on the combination. You're happy with the way that you're coming together? Yeah, um, considering we don't actually train that often together, it's working pretty well. Well, well done, guys. Uh, great, great to see the Dragons on the board with the win. Uh, so the score currently at 4-1, the Tiger Brokers Tigers in front. Uh, still that mixed doubles to come as we wrap things up tonight. And that match is next here in the Loon Coach New Zealand Badminton League.
Well, the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League continues on Sky Sport Next and Sky Sport 9. Andrew Dewhurst with you alongside Oliver Layton Davis as we uh, conclude tonight's match now between the Huawei Dragons and the Tiger Brokers Tigers. Uh, the Tigers have it wrapped up. They lead 4-1. So clearly they have this match in the bag, but uh, we're going to wrap things up with uh, the final clash tonight, and that is uh, mixed doubles as we welcome our players onto our show courts here this evening. Richard Bramley will lead them out, our umpire for this one. And it is mixed doubles as mentioned. And uh, just looking through the list of players, I think uh, Ashley Tan is the only of the uh, four players that we are yet to see tonight. Uh, Adam Jeffrey, Edward Lau and Justine Villiegas have all been out there on court. But, uh, first opportunity for Ashley in a brand new combination for the Huawei Dragons. And so they made that change. They made, and I should stress, they made this change prior to this uh, match tonight getting underway. So this is not uh, made in recent minutes, a decision to Take Oscar Guo out of the mix and put Adam Jeffrey in alongside Ashley Tan. Screen. Screen. And who will receive? Thank you. Insert. Happy on that side. Thank you. So I think uh, out of that, I think uh, Villiegas is going to serve. And that one final little warm-up here, an opportunity for us to uh, reintroduce most of these players. So there is uh, Justine Villiegas, who's uh, just involved in that uh, women's doubles. Uh, that's Sally Fu going down against uh, Lee and Tagle. So she'll be nice and warm. Adam Jeffrey, and, uh, featured in the men's doubles in a defeat against Jonathan Curtin and Daklin Vong at 19. Currently ranked 15th in the country in mixed doubles. And he will partner Ashley Tan for the first time. We see Ashley tonight at 16. It's uh, one of the fantastic young prospects in the game at the moment. And uh, the final of our quartet there, just in and out of shot on the right of screen is Edward Lau. No ranking in the men's doubles, but uh, it's not bad at uh, number one in the men's singles and the mixed. So it's been a little while since he was uh, out there on court, uh, Edward. So he'll have uh, warmed up again, I'm sure, on the back courts here. And going into the last match, of course, we start to think about the uh, Crystal Ashley MVP for the Knights. And uh, clearly that's going to go uh, to one of the Tiger Brokers Tigers. I'm not going to ask you to name one. Oliver Layden Davis, but uh, who's in contention of, of the players that have taken to to the court tonight? Uh, Dakman Vong must be in, in the conversation. Yeah, he has to be, wouldn't he? Springs to mind having won two matches and put in a pretty solid performance, especially in the men's doubles as well, to, to win that in two games and, and close it out uh, for the Tigers tonight. So, real step up from him, I think, from the last couple of weeks. Um, Edward was, yeah, first time he's won over Oscar in a, in a long mm. time. Mm. There's another one that stands out. So, a few certainly putting their hats in the ring for it. So that uh, presentation will take place at the conclusion of uh, this match. So Jeffrey and Tan up against Lau and Villiegas. It is possible consolation point only for the Dragons. The Tigers have this match won already. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Tiger Brokers Tigers, represented by Edward Lau and Justine Villiagis. And on my left, Huawei Dragons, represented by Adam Jeffrey, Ashley Tan. Tiger Brokers Tigers to serve, Justine Villiagis to Ashley Tan. Level play. I think the uh, Tigers are going to one. enjoy this one. All of the uh, players sitting courtside. Uh, 
Over. One. All. This is the first night that players can relax going into the last match of the night and, and not have Over. to think, I might be Two. involved in a golden game. One. Yeah, well, every other tie so far, we've been at 3-2 to two, two somebody three. coming down to this last mixed double, One. so. Oh. Kind of just highlights how tightly fought the matches, all the matches have been so far in this competition. Three. Over. Four. Two. String heard it go. It was uh, just like a little crack rather than Five, the, two. the thud as the shuttle departs the racket. The racket. Don't, do not throw the racket. Bramley there, just a little etiquette lesson for Edward Lau. He did uh, heave the racket off court. Yeah, just passed it off to a teammate to go and it uh, leaves the tension in the strings. But. It is, it's a big part of the game, isn't it? The etiquette and uh, the behaviour of players. Five. Oh, lovely piece of power. Little pocket rocket. It's over. Six. Three. Seven. A little challenge for Ashley three. Tan having to sit back and watch all night. And she's known for a little while that uh, her match, her only match, is not going to be consequential. Done, Jeffrey. It's over. Four. Seven. Out. Something about Edward Lau tonight. Or he just looks to be it's hitting over. the shuttle Eight. so clean compared to Four. most other players. Yeah, case in point. Is, uh, just everything he touches seems to, to find space and uh, come back with quality. And Four. it's certainly been his night so far. <laughs> makes, uh, makes a liar of us both. But <laughs> Lau and Villegas are unbeaten. They've Five. had two wins in the competition Nine. so far, whilst uh, Adam Jeffrey and Ashley Tan, as we described, a new combination. Reactions for the Agus. It's over. Ten. Game point. Five. Yeah, real signature, I guess, of this first game is the way, where she's been positioning herself at the front of the court. Sorry about that. Well, we heard that, didn't we? Sorry, Lau Lau, I think, was the call. Uh, Six. Justine just got her Ten. positioning all wrong. Bolt. And they game. win the first game. And we should stress here the quality of this pairing. This game of all the matches Tiger tonight, this is probably 11, the easiest one to pick six. on paper, isn't it? With Lau and Villiegas very much holding the upper hand. Yeah, exactly. They've been they've been playing well throughout the competition so far. And of course, with Jeffrey and, and Tan being their first possibly ever match that they've, they've played together. So it's pretty difficult to come together as they have against a more established pairing in, in Villiegas and Lau. And, and try and foot it with them from the start. So they've been probably outplayed so far in the first three, and also with Villegas being able to take control of the net, so they're going to have to try something, throw a bit of caution to the wind, I guess, and, and step up and really try and just challenge the player with a bit of freedom, which, of course, they can do, um, given that the result of the overall tie is, is he already taken care of. So probably a chance for them to try and play themselves into the match, be a bit, bit more free, a bit more creative, take a few more risks, and 
and see if they can find something that they can build on uh, in the coming weeks if this is going to be a mixed pair that the Dragons continue to, to use. Yeah, there's certainly uh, some investment in the later rounds of the competition right here tonight, that's for sure. Ashley Tan, the youngest in the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. She's one of a number of 16-year-olds in the competition. But just to underline that pre-lockdown, she was in the under-17 Waitakere girls competition. So to jump from that to this uh, in amongst the very best in the country is uh, quite a big step up, but a great Second experience game. nonetheless Level. for Tan. Play. Oh. One, love. This could be over pretty quickly. Two, love. Tigers, great combination to have, isn't it, in the final Over, match of, uh, of the night, whoever they're playing three. against. Yeah, 100%, I think it's definitely... Out. Yeah, one of the, the stronger mixed combinations that they've got in the way they've, they've set their mixed pairs Two. up. Three. Makes sense to again play your, your unbeaten pair um, later on in the evening. Of course, no Over. ranking with the mixed doubles, so you can Four. play Two. whoever you like, wherever you like. So I think the, the, the order comes in becomes more important in that sense. The recovery in that point from Villegas was wonderful to see. Turning defence into attack Five. so quickly. Two. Well, she's been especially strong in, in the first four serve Six. return situation throughout Two. the whole match as well. to a Two. most impressive victory in this match and in the tie for the Tiger Brokers Tigers. Eight. It's a real test of these youngsters to try and communicate and stay engaged in the match and at the moment they're a little uh, out of sorts with body language. between the two and this will be something that uh, the coach will talk about us over nine most of this opportunity three almost, almost every serve for the Agus and Lau are talking what are we doing yeah then you can yeah you can see the, the benefits Ten. that it's given them in the Match serve point. return situation as well three well done power from Jeffrey that's certainly uh, a Five real up. strength in his kit bag. Ten. Hey, well played, well played by the youngsters. Five, 
in. That is a dominant end to a dominant performance by Lau and Villegas. And it wraps up a comprehensive performance tonight by the Tiger Brokers Tigers. They'll take out this tie 5-1 over the Huawei Dragons to cement their position. Match one by the top of the table. Tiger Brokers Tigers, 11-6, 11-5. Richard Bramley with uh, a fairly succinct summary of a very impressive performance. So your thoughts on this one, Ollie, and we will hear from you to wrap up the tie. But uh, your thoughts on this one, uh, it went as expected. Yeah, just a, a class above, I think, from Lau and Villegas and their performance in that final mixed doubles for this evening. Jeffrey and Tan obviously playing together for the first time. Did show a little bit in the communication and, and the way they positioned themselves in the court. But again, when the freedom that Villegas and Lau were able to play with being 4-1 uh, up already, just, yeah, allows them to, to be relaxed and, and play the game. And they dominated from the first four and then they're really good on offense as well. Andrews uh, with Villegas and Lau now for their comments. Thanks, uh, Ollie. Uh, th that was dominant, guys. And, and you have the advantage of a combination that's played a little bit together now and against a very new combination. But well done. Really good performance. Thank you. It was really good. It's great having um, Edward as a partner because he covers the court really well. Yeah, so it was good. And in very good form tonight, uh, Edward. Uh, that, that's just a perfect night for you. The win uh, in the singles over Oscar and then finishing with a, with a lovely win in this one. You pleased with your game? Yeah, I was pleased with my performance today. Like, I felt like I was in control most of the time and we could build rallies from there. Well, you should be pleased because uh, I'm going to ask you. Justine, to pass that over, because uh, on, on behalf of everyone, but to the Crystal Ashley MVP, uh, coming from your teammate, I hope that means something for you, coming from uh, Justine, but, um, and, and well deserved on, on a night where, as I say, from a singles perspective, you must be really pleased, if I can just go back to that win, you must be delighted with that one. Yeah, I was, like, after the first game, I, I got a lot of confidence from there, but, and yeah, that's basically how, how I pulled through Communication seems to be really good between the two of you. How important is that in any combination to be communicating well the whole way through? I think it's really important, especially with a lot of new pairs. So if you don't talk, then it gets quite confusing who gets what shot. So it's really important to talk in between and say, okay, I'll get this one. And yeah, yeah, and our game plan, of course, yeah. And, and, and of course, it, it, it wrapped up a really good win, 5-1, and you're on top of the table. Are you pleased? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> really, uh, we were actually really nervous because all games were going to be 50-50, and so we were happy to be on top of most of the games. It was really good. Yeah. Great stuff. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Uh, Edward Lau and Justine Villegas are taking out the, uh, the mix to end the evening, and uh, the Crystal Ashley design MVP for Edward as well. Well done, guys. Go and celebrate with your teammates. Congratulations. Uh, that wraps up uh, uh, tonight's performance. I'll bring uh, Oliver Layden davis in to uh, get his thoughts on a comprehensive performance. The first three matches tonight went three games. They were close. And I think we heard that just then from Justine that they went into this thinking this is 50-50. But that's a really impressive team performance. Yeah, I think we talked about it on paper as well before the tie started, how close it was. There was a couple of matches that we were looking forward to. But again, it was really even across the board. And it was just the, uh, the Tigers, sorry, that came away um, with the win in those first three matches but it could have been a really different story. What do the Dragons do now to regroup? Uh, they're yet to get a win uh, and that will hurt them tonight. What, what do they do to try and get back into this competition? It sounds cliche but honestly keep doing what they are. I think they're, they're close. Um, they've shown that in all three matches so far. They just haven't really got the rewards to, to show for it yet so keep working at it. Um, perhaps maybe the timeouts can come in a little later on and in matches where things maybe they haven't been used yet just to try and formulate a plan for those later stages but just come into some agreements of what to do when things get close. And of course uh, tomorrow night a big match up the uh, uh, the Hay Tour Hawks and the One Pure Wolves. Uh, who's favourite for that one Ollie? Uh, how how are the uh, the Wolves feeling? You, you confident going into it? Yeah good the lineups just come out already actually so I had a bit of a look before so it's in for an intriguing contest I think but yeah we grow a lot from week one to week two so we'll be looking to do the same thing into tomorrow and yeah it's exciting to take on the Hawks. I think they were top of the table coming into tonight um, before the Tigers have just taken that spot from them but yeah it's going to be a pretty big battle.
Oh, we're well, looking forward to that one. Thanks, Ollie, for your uh, your company and thoughts uh, tonight. A uh, comprehensive win in the end. It was 5-1 for the Tiger Brokers Tigers over the Huawei Dragons, who uh, uh, struggle at the bottom of the table now. But uh, for the Tigers, they are flying high indeed. Uh, tomorrow night we do it all again. Another great match in prospect. Make sure you join us for more Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. We're back again from 7 o'clock.